So this is the uh, construction or production line for the uh, front cube dongle. And uh, what I'm doing here is I'm uh, testing out units which have been uh, constructed by a third party. And uh, this is the equipment I've got. And if this looks like it's being done in my kitchen, that's because it is being done in my kitchen. So I have a hob which I don't use for any electronics. Um, and I've also got a washing machine. Again, I don't actually use this for electronics. And a microwave, which again is actually used for cooking. What you might be able to see down here, this is the results of um, the rework that I've had to do on uh, the last hundred or so boards that are coming from a, a manufacturer. And uh, I don't know how many parts are there, but I've had to individually test each one. But as you can see, there's, there's, there's quite a lot of uh, parts in there. And uh, this is a result mostly of uh, voltage regulators failing. And uh, just here we have, uh, this is all that's left actually which uh, need testing, I've got six more boards to test so I've done uh, 94 boards uh, so far, fixed them and uh, got them working. Uh, taking you through what I have here, uh, this is uh, a unit which I've got, I'm just about to actually have to, this is the first one for a long time, I've had to have to lift one of the large chips so I'm going to be showing you that in a moment. And uh, as you can see, I have a stereoscopic microscope here, which I use for uh, the delicate movements of uh, the uh, tweezers. And uh, you can see the normal things, like I've got a uh, multimeter here, solder, uh, wick, uh, a bit of uh, flux there as well. Uh, also, this is quite handy here. This is a magnifying uh, light. Uh, which I find quite handy for when well, you don't have to get in quite as close as uh, you do with, uh, with the microscope. And uh, here on the soldering department, um, I've got here uh, a hot air gun and also uh, a very small, about a one millimeter tip soldering iron. And uh, next to it, I've got another soldering station which uh, includes a, a bigger iron which I use for. Uh, soldering SMA connectors and also wicking up uh, lots of solder if I've got a, um, perhaps some, uh, a fairly large area to soak up solder when I'm doing rework and also some tweezers. Um, I, I can't do without these tweezers for doing rework I have to say. And when uh, we're finally testing the units, uh, here we go, you may, may see this uh, as something uh, that you recognise. I've got SpectraView running, um, I also have um, yeah, the MP Lab IDE, which has a bootloader program ready to upload onto uh, a set of uh, units, and uh, also here uh, I've got my uh, uh, firmware uploader, and above that I have uh, uh, the um, frequency control for the dongle. So essentially, what I do is I, I uh, upload the bootloader using the MP Lab IDE, then I put in the software itself using the bootloader program, and then I test it with this. And to check for um, sensitivity, I also have a, a comms test set here, which is a Marconi 2955. You can pick them up on eBay for 500 quid or so, probably less now, I guess. Um, and also a scope. Um, most of the time, I don't have to resort to the scope at all, um, but uh, sometimes you do when you're trying to debug something. Um, and uh, also, here I've got a couple of aerosols and, of course, Diet Coke, which is, uh, keeps me awake. Uh, one of the aerosols is a flux cleaner uh, to remove uh, excess flux, and the other one is just some um, uh, isopropyl alcohol for cleaning things up. Oh, one thing I just forgot here um, this is the, the real ice that I use for programming the units, and also, we shall see here in a moment, this is a little uh, jig, test jig that I use to uh, uh, program the units with the initial uh, bootloader program. And I've got a, a remote control for the TV which you have to have and uh, when you're doing this sort of work and uh, also a couple of telephones just in case anyone decides to phone me. Okay so what we're going to do now is I'm going to uh, remove a chip. Uh, the device I'm actually going to move it, remove is this one here and I'm going to show you how I replace it as well so uh, hopefully uh, be okay. Now I'm looking at this through, I'm going to be looking at this through a microscope so uh, uh, sometimes I have to move a little bit, but uh, hopefully this will be fine for you to see. And uh, probably what I want to show you is, uh, I'm going to take a wide angle shot here. 
what I'm going to be doing here is taking the uh, hot air gun and moving it down onto the chip and removing it. So uh, it's a delicate operation, uh, but actually when you've done a few it's, it's not too bad. So you'll see, well, I usually start off quite high and then gradually move it in over the period of, of uh, a few tens of seconds or so. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to warm the board up. And um, it takes a little bit of time, a little bit of patience, and um, it wouldn't normally come at an angle like this, but um, I can't get the microscope in there at the same time, so uh, you have to have a little slight compromise here. So um, I'm actually looking at this not through the microscope at the moment, I'm, I'm looking at it um, uh, without any visual aid at all, just so that I can check to see uh, in 3D that I've actually got the uh, chip in my. Uh, within the hot air gun area. Now I'm going to start looking into through the microscope now as I draw in a little bit closer and in a little while I'll, I'll be able to see the, the solder start to melt and um, there you go, removed. So see me in a couple of seconds and we're putting a new one back in. Okay, so sorry for the intermission there, I just wanted to check something on the unit because um, I was concerned that uh, I already tested the voltage regulator for excess voltage and uh, just wanted to check it again because I don't understand why this uh, chip uh, presented a, a short circuit down to, uh, down to ground on the, that voltage uh, regulator. So, voltage regulator is good uh, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, clean up the areas a bit. Now, might seem a little bit like overkill, but I'm going to use the sort of fairly large iron now. I'm going to apply a bunch of solder to all the pads here. There we go. And you see, it's probably probably a little bit too much there, which we can sort out a little bit of. Uh, solder wick in a moment. So there we go. Solder wick. Clean it up a little bit. In the small hours, well, try in the centre pad here for this QFN. Just try to make sure there's not too much solder on there. If there is too much solder, you'll find that when you try to put the uh, the replacement device down, uh, you'll have a few few problems. Um, because it won't uh, won't be level. Okay, so what I didn't do was get out the replacement chip. So uh, I'm get into my uh, stash here of spare chips. Here we go. Okay. Oh, Okay, now I've got some flux here. So I'm going to put some flux over the chip itself. This makes the solar flow a lot easier when you have a bit of flux when you're doing this. Okay, there we go. Not too much. Just enough just to wet it. Okay. Take the chip. Stick this puppy down here. If I look like I'm shaking, that's probably because I am. Okay, I'm going to make a bit of an effort just to see if I can. Get it sent a little bit. Okay. Now I get the uh, trusty hot air gun out. So uh, again, we'll be doing the same kind of thing. So I come in over a few tens of seconds, and I come in fairly high just to warm things up. Oh, by the way, what I should mention is, is always check, double check, and triple check the uh, that the chip is in the right orientation. The last thing you want to do is to have to lift it all over again. 
Um, but you'd be surprised, you can actually lift the chip a number of times on a, on a, on a board. As long as all the solder is melted, then you, you shouldn't lift too many tracks. So you see I'm gradually coming in now. And again, not using the microscope all the time. There we go. Right, so the solder's starting to melt now. I should have done. Just check see everything's there. Much more importantly though, the bait fish are beginning to show up under the lights. Several of the crew are jumping into the sea to position the right. bait net okay. and the shoal. That's good. I'm just going to spin it round a couple of times, make sure it's oriented, oriented correctly, and that we're not in, in mid-tracks. Okay. And the next thing to do is let's see if we can clean this up a little bit. And, uh, and I'm going to just maneuver around the uh, camera a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. I just want to get the solder really onto those pins there. As you actually couldn't see any of that, so I'm going to show you how you do one side. There you go. And that's how you get the, even though it's, uh, the pads aren't actually wrapped around the, the chip, that's how you get the uh, connection through. You do it on all four sides. And that's it. Oh, you might want to clean it up with a little bit of um, flux cleaner afterwards. Okie doke, so here's the dongle. Um, and uh, as it stands here, uh, I've... Uh, just done a, a quick fix on uh, one of the chips here, which uh, you may be able to see. It was this one just here. And uh, what I've done is plug it into the USB port on the uh, laptop. And what we're going to do now is program it up and just show you what's involved in that. The first thing I have to do is put the boat bootloader in. Now, you may be able to see down here that uh, I have a special little adapter, which a uh, little jig here. And uh, what I do is I literally just put this unit into the adapter. And uh, suddenly, actually my arm gets in the way here. Just hold my thumb down on it, and uh, let's see if I can program it. I'm off my laptop, you don't get me in the way. All I do is, is uh, from the MP Lab ID, you do program, sits there, done. And you'll, you might just heard that. That was a little beep from the computer saying I've recognised it. So I program the bootloader, and now it uh, understands the bootloader. So the next thing I want to do. I just move the camera around. You see, there's a bootloader, so it's, it's recognised it now. All I have to do now is to say I want to write the firmware. Take a few seconds to do this. You see it whizzing down the screen. That's it. Then what I do, I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. is I take the unit out of the USB and then I plug it back in again and you'll see there's a little LED has suddenly appeared here now uh, this is now after the bootloader we're now in the uh, the real SDR software so the next thing to do is I want to make sure that uh, this is sensitive enough so uh, this is where the comms test set comes in and uh, so this is the lead from the comms test set and uh, just screw it in here. Now, can I just boot it up the dongle? Uh, I have to set the frequency, so uh, I zoom in to the frequency set program here. You'll see there, I've got the uh, frequency uh, plugged in. And all I have to do here is to I'll set the default settings and then set the frequency. And then if I just uh, unwind a little bit, I'm just going to start off Spectra View. And you'll see there's a, there's a signal right now coming from the, uh, hopefully you can see it, you can hear it as well, there's a little bit of constant tone there. I hope you can see that. Anyway, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the shot of the uh, 
see here, we're hopping around about the 12 dB sign out for our 151 microvolts in. So this is my standard test that I do on these devices, so uh, just to make sure that they're all, they're all to spec. And uh, that's uh, the, the first set of my uh, checkouts that I do.